Hi folks, in this video um, I'm going to be doing an oil change on the R32 um, as part of this uh, oil change or basic service we have the parts in front of you um, just to take you through them we have the oil here which you should see is the Fuchs Titan uh, Race Pro S and that's the 5W30 grade um, great quality oil use it in different grades on various cars it's my oil uh, or go-to oil it's up to yourself what you use or whether you want to use genuine stuff oil filter itself is a genuine filter the part number for it is here so hopefully that comes out I'll have that listed in the description as well um, within that box um, obviously you get your oil filter but you'd also get this large o-ring as well this o-ring you'll see in due course is for the oil filter housing cap um, but I'll show you how, how that goes on in due course you'll also see in this packet I have my original sump plug there with washer um, I'm actually using the racing line um, magnetic sump plug and in that packet it gives you some spare sump plug um, o-rings there so uh, or washers I should say so um, I'm going to replace the washer and the sump plug with one of these and they give you five for memory in the packet so anyway that's us good to go time to get the car oil slightly warm and um, just helps it drain out a wee bit easier and of course get the car lifted up as well so we can get access so I'll do that now Of course, take a trail off as per quite a few of the videos here, unlike some in the uh, card section above here. Let's pass through the ESP 25 speed to get some trail off. Okay folks, you can hopefully see the black sump plug there just where my finger is. This uh, racing line plug is a 14mm. Um, I'll double check the size of the original plug and put that up in the bottom of the video. In short, this is of course the sump plug. Um, I've cracked this off already so this should come off relatively easy. Um, basically the principle will be take the plug out and of course the oil is going to shoot out this way so have your pan you know edging towards this side of the sump plug and try and catch as much of it as you can and bear in mind this might block the camera angle a little there's very little clearance to get the camera in with the, the sub frame and things there but you'll get the principle anyway so let's get this loosened off a bit more Okay, that's it, definitely coming. Okay, in hand. Yep, you can see the oil starting to dribble out there. There we go. Leave that to drain now for a wee while and clean up my hands as you can see here as well. Would also just suggest folks you actually pop off the oil filler cap in your engine bay as well just so it's not creating a vacuum and actually letting it flow out that bit easier. I'm going to try and swap over drain pans here folks. 
the next job is quite a bit me messy and um, getting the filter out so I'm going to swap over the smaller drain pan to go onto the sump for the remainder and move over to this big pan here um, as you can tell there's a bit of experience behind that so uh, trying to prevent getting a messy arm here The next task is to get the oil filter off. Um, you see this black housing here, aircon pump, etc. This is at the front of the engine, right in front of the sump. Um, in short, um, this plastic housing holds the oil filter, so this is what you need to remove to get access to it. Um, there is, you'll see, a silver drain plug to drain the filter housing. However, that bolt commonly rounds off and it has it uh, commonly um, is over tightened there's an o-ring on that so it really does not need a great deal of torque i actually had to replace my housing due to it because it had just millered all the threads in it anyway um to get this off that's a 30 mil hex or 36 mil hex i'm going to take off the entire housing and, and get into the filter i'm not going to bother with that drain plug even I know I torqued that all properly myself the last time, but I'm not going to bother. Okay, that's it starting to go. I can see it was turning there, so I'm going to get my uh, black filter or my black drip tray. I'm going to get my black drip tray and set that under the filter and remove it. That's the tray under it. Let's see if I can get this removed. Okay, that's it coming very, very loose there. I might be able to get it with my hands. Yep. Make sure this is pretty centralised here. And just as a warning, there you go. This housing is going to contain oil, so try not to cover your arm in it. Like so. Just letting this housing drain out, then I'll take it off and come out from under the car and show you replacing the actual filter itself. You should see the old oil filter cap and uh, uh, filter itself here. It just pulls off the plastic housing. There's wee clips down the bottom there, you'll see that clip into it. So obviously the old filter can be disposed of. The cap we obviously have to reuse. So let's give it a clean up, give it a bit of a wipe down, replace the o-ring that goes around here. And if the, uh, the sump and all has finished draining and dripping, we can obviously get it reinstalled. So let's give it a quick spray with some brake cleaner here and get it cleaned up. That all looks pretty clean. Give the threads a wee clear down as well. Okay, now that we have that pretty clean, um, the next stage will be to get this O-ring off. So hopefully you have a flat blade screwdriver or a set of picks like I have and we can hopefully hook this oil filter off or the o-ring off and this is the pick we need 
to wander it like so. That's it off. Uh, time to grab the new one and of course lubricate it with a bit of oil as well. Uh, a new oil I would say too. So I'll grab the old or the new o-ring here. Okay, o-ring in hand. You can hopefully just see the new bottle of oil there. So getting some oil out of this cap. Spreading it around the o-ring here. Like so. Time to get the oil filter cap and start to put this on. Try not to stretch it too much as well. If we can actually get it on. There we go, let's get started. Okay, and you can hopefully see it just there. There's a wee recess for it, just where the thread stop on the housing there. I'm just checking it's not twisted in any way, shape or form. That's us. Good as gold. Time now to get the new filter and set it on. So we'll get this stuff out of the way. And here we have the new filter. Um, I think this is a bit of a, a filter that is used across a range of engines. So what some guys do, they, they, they use that o-ring there on that little uh, hex bolt there, which you can use, it's the right size. It's up to yourselves. I tend to leave them on. And certainly in this case, whenever I know that o-ring's good. So anyway, filter clips on. You see it, those wee pegs clip onto the outside of that uh, ring that goes around the inside. So very simple. That's it in place. Very simple. You can see it's spinning nice and clearly so it's not locked up. So that's all done. The next thing is potentially a messy job is to pre-charge this filter with a bit of oil. And basically what you want to do is fill it just where the filter um, is soaked with oil. Um, the idea is that there'll be a, a delay as your engine tries to build up oil pressure and pour into the filter so you're reducing the risk of any damage to your engine. It's a, it's a good practice thing to do. So we'll try and do that gracefully without covering myself. And I'm going to aim for the middle of the filter there. And see it dripping down the side a wee bit there as well. And you can actually see that paper filter, um, you'll see it actually just starts to change colour as it gets wet and absorbs some of the, the oil. Okay, making a bit of a mess too. And you'll see it takes a wee while for the oil to be absorbed. And you can see the colour just in that drip. So you can take this nice and easy. Maybe try some down the side here. And see I'm losing a wee bit just in the floor there. That's probably the way to do it, just to make life a wee bit easier for you. Just pour it against the side of the filter. And keep an eye that you're not pouring any around yourself. around the other side here as well. See that's it filling up. I'm just watching the line around the bottom of the filter as well and I can see it sort of filled up nearly to the edge and what this should do is it start, should start creeping up the filter as, it, as the paper starts to absorb it. That'll take a bit of time so I'll leave the filter doing its business there. 
um, we'll go back onto the car and see how things are getting on. Okay, we can see the filter housing's pretty much stopped dripping there. So using a clean bit of roll, I'm going to wipe it all down, make sure there's no dirt around the seals. Okay, we're happy that's clean, there's no dirt around it, we're going to get in or anything like that. So what we'll do now is we'll uh, check the filter and get it ready to install. Okay, um, I've got the filter now beside me, so let's get this installed again. Just as a note, I did give it a second top up of oil, so it's sitting in a bath of oil. So we should be ready to get this installed. And you'll see I've got the drain pan shifted slightly out of the way. And just make sure that filter's in place, which it is. Slide it up and just screw it on by hand. Okay, that's it hand tight and just as a note um, it's actually labeled on the filter housing itself 25 newton meters is the tightened and torque okay and once you're tightened to 25 newton meters you're pretty much good to go the next stage will be to look towards the sump itself Get the sump plug ready with a new washer and we can plug that up. You'll see in front of you one of the last jobs to do the sump plug. It needs a washer uh, on it each time and it's a replacement item any time you take the sump plug out. So there's the old one, we can get rid of that and we'll put that to the side so we don't get confused. Give the sump plug a wee clean, just use a bit of brake cleaner, nothing fancy. Um, as mentioned there, that is one of the racing line um, magnetic jobbies. Generally not a big fan of these, but presumed being a, an OE aftermarket style one, it should be a-okay. But anyway, the great thing is that these give you loads of uh, sump plug washers with it. So that's a new washer on, ready to go. We can now move on to having a look at the sump plug and whether we put, we're ready to put it in or not, whether it stopped dripping. So we'll go back onto the car. Okay, you can see there's very little coming out of the sump now. So time just to give this a, a wee wipe down and get the, the sump plug and new washer ready to install. So that's been wiped down. Get the sump plug. Okay, and that's the sump plug on. Look at that, we wipe down, making sure everything's a okay. And that's you pretty much finished underneath the car. I'm just going to give the area a bit of a wipe down and a spray with brake, brake cleaner. You might have seen I made a bit of a mess just when I was taking the oil filter uh, housing off. I'm just going to wipe that down for good measure. Um, but you'll next see me, we're above the car and um, we're ready to start filling up with oil. Okay, time to get the car filled up with oil now. First step, get the dipstick out. And there shouldn't be any reading on this of course, but... Um, Gonna get the dipstick out, get it all wiped down and get it ready. And time to start filling up with oil now. So I'll get a wee funnel, make life easy for myself and start adding in the oil. I have a half open container so I'm probably going to chuck the majority of it in. You're generally advised to take it easy just to get the oil capacity right because you don't want to really overfill it of course. But anyway, I'll maybe aim for 3 litres, 4 litres or so. Pour it in and then keep checking the dipstick and doing it sort of back and forth just to be sure.
let's just check the dipstick for the crack here. Yeah, it's not even regist registering at all. So uh, let's chuck in the, the next, say, litre or so, and we can go from there. Naturally, when you're filling up with oil, it is going to take a wee bit of time to actually get down into the sump. But I have a good idea of what if, if good idea volume-wise would have taken out of the sump uh, and drained out of it. Let's do another wee check. Yeah, it's not even registering in the dipstick, so we'll maybe give that a wee minute to see if it settles down into the sump. Okay, time to add a bit more in. Okay, that's about four litres in. Okay, folks, you should hopefully see there um, the level is just sort of beneath the hash marks there. So what I'll do is add up another, say, maybe 250 mils, maybe half a litre of oil, try and get it back up into the hash marks. Okay, I just took a wee break there to get my dinner. Um, you can hopefully see there in the dipstick the level is just sort of below the hash marks there. So I'm going to get the funnel back out and maybe add in 250 to 500 mils and see how that goes and try and get the level up. You can hopefully see the level now. It's about two lines into the hash marks. So I'll add in another 100 or 200 litres. See how that goes in the dipstick mark. Okay, you can hopefully see there the level's just sort of at the top of the hash marks. Okay folks, I'm out the next uh, day, um, ran out of time last night getting this finished off. In short, I've ran the car for a few minutes, just to get the oil circulating around the head and the rest of the engine. Let the car cool down for an hour or two, I'm just checking through the level again now. And it's just a little below uh, the hash marks on the dipstick, so it needs a wee light top up. In short, um, I'm sure everybody watching the video can check their oil levels and stuff that way. Just needs a wee tweak to add a bit more in. So that's the oil uh, level actually sorted. We'll now move on to resetting the uh, service light with OBD11. So I'll do a wee quick top up of the oil here and you'll see me next inside the car. Hi folks, here we are in OBD11 about to reset the service light on the car. Um, I and my free previous service changed the spark plugs and um, the air filter is a K&N panel filter so I don't need to change it. So I've changed the oil there, um, time to reset the light um, or the service light. So let's go in to my car, go down to apps. And if we scroll down, we should be able to go into workshop. There's an oil service reset. So click an oil service reset. And on the drop down, we only have the reset option there anyway. Pick the box, hold to write it. And that is the oil service complete there. Simple as that. That's your oil service complete. That it, it really is that straightforward. That's where OBD11 makes life very, very easy for you and very user user friendly interface. So that's the the service complete in the R32 there. 
Um, as always, I hope that video helped somebody there and maybe give somebody the confidence to, to give it a go themselves. Um, but yeah, any comments or queries, stick them in uh, the comments section below in the video. And as always, feel free to like, share and subscribe. Cheers, folks. Bye-bye.